There we go. The signal seems to be working again. Hello there. I'm sure you're wondering how you've got here. Do not worry. A lot of questions will be answered shortly. Rest a little first. Oh? That feeling in your head? Just the after effects of my time scoop. You see, you've been taking a bit of a journey. The year is 2195 and the world is in desperate need of your help. I've been alone for so long researching on our magic machines. About 50 years ago, I was living in one of the last human colonies left. Of course, at that time, we believed it was all there was. An underground society built underneath a chaotic sky and I was banished to live above ground for all eternity. I soon learned that something else was happening in the world. We had stories we told of a time when we all lived above the dirt, and a great storm forced us underground. The storms were definitely real. We had already visited the surface many times in search of water, but no one really stopped to look around. Luckily, as a man of science, studying and experimentation was in my genes. I quickly noticed that the shadows seemed to be alive once I had to be on the upper surface for more than one day. The shadows moved like a hunter, seeking something, something to corrupt. I am not really sure, but these shadows were a force that was altering the landscape, blocking out the sun, reshaping the land to its liking regardless of the laws of physics. The storms and the chaos and the destruction were all that was left in its wake. It didn't take me long to discover the remnants of some cities, the burning infernos of others, the winds, the rains, the snow. My adventure within the old kingdom led to a near-death experience, a floor collapse sending me what seemed like miles down. I'm not sure how long I was out, but when I awoke I was in a room with lights. The sounds of machines, beeping and blipping. My eyes lit up. I was injured, but luckily only had a few broken bones. I patched myself up with whatever I could find and went right to work. It only took me a year to understand the technology. I invented a time scoop to go back into time and take whatever I wanted back. I also researched the files left in this place, both still and moving images, discovered amazing things. Some of the best ancient files I've ever seen. And then there was fantasy football, a competition of minds to predict the statistics during the outcome of great battles on a field of numbers. What's that? Why are you here? Yes, yes. I almost forgot. Why to save the world, of course. You see, the prophecy tells of an ancient relic, something called the Green Bowl, which only the most worthy of twelve potential heroes can hold up and drink the sacred elixir from. Upon my research, it became apparent that the shadows originated in a place called Egypt, at a structure known as the Great Pyramid. I'm still researching why this is, but for now just know that the prophecy states that the chosen hero will be the one worthy enough to be the last one standing with the ancient relic. That hero must drink from the cup to reverse the shadows. Back to whilst they came. The ancient relic is apparently somewhere in a land called Europe across the great ocean. Two of you will be worthy enough to take the relic to the great pyramid where you will face off one more time to see who will be the one who will go into the deep chamber and then drink from the relic in order to save the world. You are the potential chosen ones because of the wonderful competition, fantasy football. I will send you back to your normal times once the deed is done. Time is of the essence. I am led to believe the shadows will try to mess with your heads during this trial. Perseverance is a must. I will contact you every week to check in on your progress and let you know more about your future and the prophecy itself. Good luck and remember. Beware the shadows. Fight for humanity, reach the goal. 
It's a quest for the green ball. Welcome to the quest for the Green Bowl, the Chaos of Shadows. I am your host, Anthony Ozo, playing as the team, the Great Superior, Superb Owls. This is a fantasy football show with a twist with my theme of the post-apocalyptic world and the need for the Green Bowl champion to save all of humanity with their powers of setting the right lineups week in and week out. While this is based on my 12-team non-PPR league, I will be discussing trends, the good, and the bad of weekly picks and other topics that will most likely help anyone playing fantasy football. I'll also discuss NFL topics and other fun things that uh, aren't necessarily related to fantasy football. And remember, this is not your normal type of show. If you want advice and injury news, you already have a lot of other resources. This is to see real life league play and perhaps... It might even entice some of you to start and join your own leagues if you don't play fantasy football at this moment. I'm not sure why you do not. This first episode, of course, is our draft show with the league's draft already over and our teams being set until waivers, injuries, and trades alters them throughout the year. We use NFL.com as a base, but any projections or power rankings about teams will come from an algorithm that uses all of the major websites and fantasy information that we have available, including CBS Sports, Yahoo, ESPN, and other sites. Today, I'll be discussing some of the oddities of our draft, where players were picked, the power ranking grades, uh, and also discuss a few sleepers picked in later rounds. Our first game of the week will also be featured. It'll be a weekly thing where I pull out one matchup and go a little bit more in depth on the players and what they do. And the next week, we'll also go over what actually happened in the matchup and have some interviews of our players as well, to just, just so that you can hear what they did and why they made their gut feelings and reactions to create their lineups. And it's time to move to our main topic of the week, and that is our draft recap and the league that we're featuring on this show. This is actually the seventh year that my fantasy league has been going on with many of us being around from the beginning. Uh, It's still a draft that I personally can never prepare for. I've done so many. I've been in so many leagues, public, private. I've won some titles in some leagues, uh, had some good seasons, and a long pass of playing. I mean, I've been playing since high school. But our league's draft is so random. It forces quick decisions, tough choices, and and, uh, a a lot of why did the kicker just go in the eighth round reactions. I mean, the funny thing is, is that some of the champions in this league have made picks in the past that would have been laughed at in probably every other league and on all the fantasy sites, but they ended up working out for them. And it's because of uh, we have some different point things and everything like that. I mean, no one really knows what an NFL coach is going to do, too, let's be honest. No one can predict injuries. Matchups are important, but sometimes they don't work out as expected. You know, sometimes the matchup is so good that the teams know. So things get mixed up to completely alter fantasy football scoring for the week. That's why you'll have a guy vulturing touchdowns out of nowhere. That's why, you, you, you know, you'll be like, oh, this this team's really good uh, against stopping the run, but not against stopping the pass. Well, maybe that team was preparing a certain way, and, and maybe all of a sudden there were some short yardage situations and some guy breaks the touchdown or something like that, and then all of a sudden it's completely skewed. So you never know what's going to happen. You know, Plus, there's th- the unpredictable breakout in fantasy, which happens all the time. I mean, I guarantee you watch Red Zone, there's like two or three guys a week that are scoring crazy amounts of fantasy points that are probably on zero teams. It's just what happens 
Uh, it happens week in and week out. And our league's first oddity in our draft comes in at number three with Devontae Adams going to Natty Ice Ice Baby. Adams is projected as the first rounder, uh, you know, but at the same time, he's not projected as the third overall pick because of the running back need of most fantasy teams. And there was a lot of running backs to choose from this year. You know, and then there's Travis Kelsey going to the Remember the Titans. Yes, a tight end going sixth overall. While a beast, Echelor, Elliott, Jones, Taylor, and Chubb were passed up. Those are a lot of running backs that could be make a case to be the number one running back on a fantasy team. So it's uh, it, those are the types of things that I look at. I'm just like, wow, probably not happening in most leagues. Uh, we'll definitely be looking at that throughout the year. In round two, Natty Ice Ice Baby again. Pick it, sorry, I'm picking on you. <laughs> Goes all in on the Packers with A.A. Ron Rodgers going at pick number 22. Quarterbacks that early? Wow, in my league, that's exactly what happens. And it usually starts a chain reaction. Once one quarterback goes, suddenly all the quarterbacks start going. The same thing happens with kickers and defenses, no matter what round, because people start to get worried, like, oh, man, I can't wait until the 14th round. I can't wait until the 7th round to get a quarterback. I'm going to miss out on a good quarterback. So, And we we score six uh, points for touchdowns for our quarterback. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit more important than maybe in other leagues. So it, it's one of those things. So Aaron Rodgers goes to really amazingly well before Patrick Mahomes. Hilariously, Patrick Mahomes fell to me <laughs> in the fourth round, and I snatched up Patrick Mahomes at that point, being the 12th overall pick in the draft. Um, so, you know, if, if she doesn't take, if Natty Ice Ice Baby doesn't take A.A. Ron Rogers, I might have waited a little longer. You know, it's just uh, kind of the way it goes. I, I decided to take a chance, and, uh, you know, we also in round three had another tight end going George Kittle at number 25 and, and tight end Darren Waller went at number 27 before players like Julio Jones, Chris Carson, Terry McLaurin, Scary Terry going after tight ends. That's pretty nuts. A, uh, A.J. Brown, Miles Sanders also going after those tight ends. Uh, Lamar Jackson was actually the fifth quarterback taken off the board in round five. Kind of a steal for the Siamese Dreamcats, if, uh, if it's my opinion. Uh, the Rams, Steelers, Washington, and Tampa Bay defenses all going in round eight, as did kicker Young Wei Ku. Yes, kickers, defenses, round eight. We will definitely be checking in. Those teams better hope those guys are doing good and those defenses are doing good because I will pick on them all year. The Ravens, Chiefs, and 49ers defenses and kickers, Justin Tucker, Rodrigo Blankenship, and Harrison Butker all go in round nine. I mean, this is before so many guys they could some you know some maybe some rookies to pick up, some other bench players, backups, things like that. Uh, so the depth on these teams might not be as good, you know. But again, hilariously, when people pick that early, it means that the strategy of waiting might actually hurt you in some positions, if, if forcing you to stream all year. And nobody wants to do that. You want you want to at least have somebody that's reliable, um, and and we award. Uh, more points than most leagues for defenses and kickers. We alter our system. But but now I want to get to the kind of the, the, the sleepers that I've picked out from rounds 11 to 15. Uh, I've picked out five names uh, in our late picks. And I'm starting with Sony Michelle, the LA Rams, picked by Remember the Titans in round 11. Michelle is one of the many running backs who underperformed in the Patriots offense in past seasons, but now he has a change of scenery with the Rams and Sean McVay's scheme that loves to use speed, loves to run the ball, and now is a capable passer in Matthew Stafford. Michelle uh, might still be in a crowded backfield with Daryl Henderson, who's more than capable of scoring touchdowns and getting carries and getting yards between the 20s, but Michelle might all also be used more in other situations with the chance to make plays in an offense expected to score a lot. So I think the move helps Michelle a lot. He's someone to really watch. Like he's he's a guy that could come out of nowhere. You know, if you uh, anyone doing like PPR, he might be even more of a, especially if he becomes like a passing back, but uh you know, my guess is that uh, he's going to be used a lot more. Uh you know, Sean McVay really likes to use multiple running backs. Uh, so you might have a couple serviceable guys. It might be a hell. It might be you don't know who to pick each week, and you want to and you want to stay away. So 
but it, it is something to look for. To be honest, an 11th round pick, I think it's great. Remember the Titans drafted J.K. Dobbins in the fourth round, and we all know how that's working out already. Marquise Brown of the Ravens goes to Natty Ice Ice Baby in round 12. Everyone's been waiting for the Marquise Hollywood Brown show ever since he went crazy in his first game against the Dolphins in 2019. It hasn't come, and much of that is due to the Ravens' run-first offense. Lamar Jackson could beat you with his legs in a big way and has shown that he can make some big passes. Just look at the Cleveland Browns epic showdown last year in week 14 uh you know that it, lamar jackson was injured he comes back he makes a crazy throw so it's like anybody that thinks he's just a running guy he, he's shown that he can make some plays and it's now uh you know it's now year three so my guess is that uh you, know, you have their injuries their running back depths down they might actually pass more maybe some shorter passes trying to make plays that way marquise brown has still got a lot of speed uh, he, he's a guy that's shown that he can make some tough catches that's going to be something to watch. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens. It could be a steal at, at you know in the twelfth round if he gets wide receiver one or two targets all of a sudden. Um, you know, even if he's a wide receiver three, it it's, could be good. Uh, Jameis Winston of the Saints. I picked up Jameis Winston in round three. My great superior, superb owls. Now that Jameis Winston is the starter of the Saints, his upside and value has skyrocketed because he can possibly help. Uh, if my number one quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, has an injury or uh, his bye. So he also could maybe be used at the trade deadline if he has like a crazy, crazy time um, and I decide that I'd rather have other guys on the team Um, because everybody needs a good quarterback and if Winston kind of comes through. You know, I know there's some concerns. uh, Will Taysom Hill and Elvin Kamara vulture too many touchdowns is even though Taysom Hill isn't starting, we know that he's used at the goal line. Uh, will prior interception concerns hurt too much with Jameis Winston? Uh, or, you know, and then the Bucs, this is back before Brady in their Super Bowl, of course, when he was on the Bucs. Uh, the defense was so bad. He was forced to throw and throw and throw. He was throwing like 50 passes a game sometimes. So even though he'd throw like three picks, he'd have like four touchdowns and it would kind of offset. So even besides the negatives of the minus two at interceptions, his fantasy numbers were pretty good, to be honest. Again, 13th round pick. Can I really go wrong there? I mean, I'm I'm happy with that pick as my backup. Nelson Aguilar of the Patriots goes to a low-key Lebowski Thor in the 14th round. The Patriots are going with uh, rookie Mac Jones at the helm. Uh, he does need targets to throw to. Uh, he has big Janu Smith at tight end. He has James White and Damian Harris at running back, and the offensive line is supposed to be good. But what about the wide receivers? You got Aguilar, Jacoby Myers, Kendrick Bourne, um, and then you have Nikhil Harry, which was just put on IR, I believe. It's really not an amazing list. So to be honest, when I look at this list, I'm like, you know, here's Aguilar. He's got some talent. Uh, especially on deep balls. I mean, he had eight touchdowns, 896 yards with uh, with Derek Carr throwing to him last season. On the Raiders, he had eight touchdowns and 768 yards in 2017 with the Eagles. That was with Carson Wentz and uh, later Nick Foles throwing to him. You know, he's certainly not going to be a a wide receiver one or two, uh, but uh, as a buy replacement, an injury replacement, a matchup guy, flex player, uh, you really can't do worse in the 14th round of a draft. I think Aguilar uh, might actually excel uh, in the Patriots' offense, depending on how they use him and depending on how Mac Jones, uh, how his accuracy is. You know, so we'll see how that all plays together. But uh, again, 14th round, can you really go wrong? Uh, Our last guy, Russell Gage on the Falcons, picked by the Siamese Dreamcats, round 15. Uh, I believe that Russell Gage, while he's not an amazing wide receiver, is very intriguing, especially as a 15th round pick. Because without Julio Jones on that team, Kelvin Ridley is the clear number one wide receiver. But who's number two? You have a rookie tight end and Kyle Pitts, and I know he's going to get targets, and I know he's a beast, and he's probably going to be very good as his career goes on. But rookie tight ends rarely make a huge offensive impact because they have to learn so much at the position because they're not just catching passes. They also have to block with the offensive line and help the run game as well as protect the quarterback sometimes. They have to learn 
you know, where to go on rollouts and things like that. So there's a lot to learn, and I'm not sure Kyle Pitts is just going to come in and be one of the greatest tight ends of all time right away. Uh, so I look at Gage as the clear wide receiver uh, two for this season for the Falcons. Uh, he was obviously their third wide receiver. He had 786 yards and four touchdowns. Um, he could get more targets this year when you look at that offense and how they threw it so much. Now, uh, Ridley is probably going to be the deep threat, but he's also probably going to be double teamed, pressed around the end zone. You know, they're going to try to take him out uh, and make other guys beat uh you know, beat their team. And I think Gage and Pitts might get more opportunities to score. And when I'm picking from both of them, I actually think that Gage probably has the upside to get maybe a couple of more touchdowns this year. So again, he's not, he's probably more of a flex player by week replacement, injury replacement, but I think he's going to be pretty relevant, you know, and only time will tell if Matt Ryan is still slinging the ball. We'll, We'll see. You know, but but you know, again, what does all this mean uh, in the computer rankings in my league? The computers uh, also have a toss-up favorite to win the whole thing uh, between our two-time league champions, Meow Master and Loki Lebowski Thor. So, so it, the, they're still throwing them as the favorites, probably based on these draft grades. Uh, the Dreamcats, my superb owls, and the Scorgasms are all in the mix as well, based on the computer rankings. Uh, but again, the weeks have to play out. We don't know what's going to happen. The computer doesn't mean anything. The results have to come in, and until the final standings, after week 17, all this is nonsense. So, without further ado, let's look at some of the week one matchups in our league and look at players to watch for each of our teams. Okay, before we get uh, to the game of the week in my league, I will go over some quick points in the other five matchups. In the Western Territory, the Stellar Bitches travel to the Sea of Angels to take on the Siamese Dreamcats, and Uncle Justy travels to the Golden Sands to take on defending champion Gal Gal in a rematch of last year's semifinal. The Dreamcats come in with a 63.3% chance to win in the matchup against the Bitches. Uh, Lamar Jackson versus Russell Wilson will be fun to watch in that one. I'm very excited to see what both of those players do the Ravens defense might also be key for the Cats Um, and Kyle Pitts he's going to be thrown into the spotlight as a rookie tight end Uh, might be interesting with Kelvin Ridley uh, on the other side on the stellar bitches side Uh, the other Western Territory matchup is projected to be a little closer with Galga holding a 55.6% chance to win uh, based on the projections Saquon Barkley and James Conner are two players to watch for Uncle Justy coming off injuries and uncertainty Uh, the Rams defense might be key for gal gal here he's rode them in the past and their defense is just perennial beasts so we'll see what happens this year uh dak prescott if he comes back from injury as strong as he started in 2020 is another guy to watch so look out for that in the eastern territory risky business travels to liberty's watch to take on remember the titans with the rivalry trophy the photographer belt on the line and green acres visits the gateway islands to take on the multiple scorgasms risky business has a 69.6 percent chance to win over remember the titans though both have a lot of uncertainty with matchups the computer goes off of last year's defensive stats for these early games so expect the projections to be a little off early on uh i wouldn't really trust when they tell you you have a good or bad matchup at this point in the season miami and the rams are better offenses than last year uh, but the patriots defense is probably going to be better too and who knows about the bears secondary joe burrow versus tom brady uh, and justin jefferson versus scary terry mclaurin those will be very interesting uh, matchups to watch could be make or break for both teams uh, in another toss-up game, the multiple scorgasms only has a 51.2% chance to win over Green Acres. Tells you how hilarious those computer rankings are. Uh, if going off last year, the matchups are very bad for Green Acres, but 
Aguilar uh, and A.A. Ron Jones and, and Justin Herbert versus Ryan Tannehill. I think those matchups are very, very fun to watch. I mean, uh, A.A. Ron Jones did so much, but he actually kind of fell off a little bit at the end of the season. Uh, Aguilar is supposed to be one of those high, high value guys that's picked early and everybody thinks he might be the number one guy this year. We'll see what happens there. Justin Herbert, of course, had a great rookie season. Will he have regression? Ryan Tannehill has been pretty solid the last couple of years, but is he really a number one quarterback to be on your fantasy team? Those are all questions that will be answered. In the Central Territory, Natty Ice Ice Baby heads to the Great Superior Eye to take on my Great Superior Superb Owls. The Superb Owls have a 57.5% chance to win. Tyree Kill versus Devontae Adams, of course, are some huge matchups, especially with Devontae Adams going number three overall. Natty Ice Ice Baby might have some, some questions to answer about that one if he doesn't uh, live up to that hype. And Noah Fant uh, versus Darren Waller will be uh, at tight end is another one to watch because, of course, Darren Waller pick 27th overall if font scores more than waller again a lot of questions to be answered by natty ice ice baby uh we also have patrick mahomes versus aaron Rodgers. another one uh that uh, aaron Rodgers was the number three pick so yeah pretty crazy when we think about uh these draft picks and how they're already thrown into the fire here and of course that brings us to the game of the week in the week one game of the week pits our two two-time champions who are both computer favorites to potentially win the title this year in an opening match of epic proportions especially since the computers are just literally just gaga over both of these teams that's right we have loki lebowski thor traveling to ghost mountain to take on meow master in the central territory these are two powerhouse teams but first, let's learn a little bit about Ghost Mountain in our epic story. Welcome everyone, our first highlighted match of our quest is one between legends in this league of leagues. But before you battle, let's learn about the home field that the match will take place in, Ghost Mountain. Ghost Mountain was once called Mount Rushmore back in your time, but in your future, it is called Ghost Mountain because of the strange warping of the faces of past leaders. In our folklore, the storms came to the region and instantly changed everything, leading to panic and uncertainty in the region. Devils and Democrats were blamed, but in just a few weeks, no one was left in the region as it became uninhabitable. Based on my research, the shadows came here before even touching the old kingdom, perhaps searching for something, or craving for something. Now back to the match some spooky lore for ghost mountain now let's uh, as we talk about this match uh how crazy is this match going to be well the computers have it as a toss-up a 50 50 split meaning it's anyone's game so this is going to be a very fun match possibly uh jalen hurts being named the number one quarterback for the eagles means that that is a matchup to watch against kyler murray um, you know, is Meow Master going to get another ridiculous pick? We'll see. Uh, both are dual threat quarterbacks. That's usually a cheat code for fantasy, as most people know. Derrick Henry versus Christian McCaffrey are both, uh, you know, top draft picks for running backs. So that's another big time matchup. You also got uh, DeAndre Hopkins and Keenan Allen. That's another big time matchup at wide receiver. Uh, but you know, when I'm looking at some players to watch here, Mike Davis, he's one that I'm really looking at on Meow Masters team that intrigues me a lot. Uh, he scored in bunches with, uh, McCaffrey's injury in 2020 for the Panthers. Um, Atlanta's new head coach, Arthur Smith was the offense coordinator in Tennessee, employing a run first beast in Derrick Henry. Davis is obviously no Derrick Henry. I mean, let's be honest. That's ridiculous to even compare the two. But he might see a big increase in touches. While it's unseen whether D Davis can sustain that for a whole season for week one, this could be a big boost for Meow Master if he does do what he did. I mean, if he does what he did in Carolina for a whole season, he's going to be one of the draft picks of the year. 
Uh, so we'll see what happens there. On Lebowski Thor's side, I look at Odell Beckham Jr. Beckham uh, is a wide receiver that is uh, obviously most known for the catch when he was a rookie with the Giants, but he has loads of talent and can certainly have a big season if he can stay healthy. The Browns like to run first, but Beckham can definitely get red zone targets and make big plays when needed. But he is coming off an injury and still hasn't played a full season with the Browns, so it remains to be seen whether he will throw up numbers of old. For week one in a game that might end up seeing the Browns chase points against, uh, you know, being at Kansas City, Beckham Jr. could get some opportunities for touchdowns, which could be a difference maker in this matchup. But we will have to wait and see. You know, it's going to it's gonna be a good one. So anybody that's paying attention uh, is going to be pretty wild. And, and, and I will actually be uh, on Instagram, on my Instagram account at E-C-L-E-C-T-I-C underscore I-O-Z-Z-O. Doing a little bit of uh, commentary uh, as the as some of these matchups go along, especially um, you know mostly on our game of the week, you know. So so pay attention to that. Come follow me on Instagram. It's gonna be fun. I'm telling you this whole year is gonna be fun. You should check out this show. I'm gonna talk about these things like this. We're gonna have our epic lore. I think it's gonna be great. And I think you guys are gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, and I know my league's gonna have fun. They love this. They uh, I always get the comments of how I'm you know one of the better commissioners. I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna stay. Uh, you know, a little humble on that one. You know, I, I'm just totally into this stuff and, and I'm a nerd. So let, let's go get it. <laughs> it's going to be fun. That's the show for the week. I hope you all enjoyed it. Next week, we will learn a little bit more about our epic story, especially what the actual numbers were after the final game on Monday night. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Please follow the Sun Dried Tomatoes YouTube channel and watch content including original shows like Legends of the Diamond, Random Reactions, and Brewing the Facts, the Sun Dried Tomatoes podcast in video form, and other sports brewing or entertainment related videos. You can like the Facebook page and follow me on Instagram at eclectic underscore yotso for news updates and just to get to know me better.